working, but never mind, just go with the flow. Um, as far back as I can remember, I want to be a gangster. Oh no, that's the good fellas. I always want to be a film geek, and that's my problem, that film has just gone into my brain and is absolutely everywhere in just about everything I do. And what I want to tell you a bit about is how a film geek became a film student, and it is a real thing. Um, and this is the film geek, the teenage film geek. I always watch a lot of films. I always watch films on old black and white films on TV. But being a student many, many times ago, uh, the first time around, I got student discounts. I went to after, I skived off and went to afternoon screenings, and I got to hire DVDs of classic films from the library. If anybody actually knows what a DVD, um, sorry, VHS originally was. I would recommend these films. These are classic films. Don't think because a film has been and gone, you should never, you've missed it in the cinema, you should never ever watch it, because these, and with Neil and I, has the best quotes ever. And this is the question I also get asked. Why are you studying a film? Why aren't you studying literature, or philosophy, or history? The answer is, well, you kind of do a bit of everything, because film draws absolutely everything in. In order to understand films, you have to understand the source material and the filmmakers and what they're putting together. It has to be said though, this is my illustration of studying film philosophy. <laughs> this particular book looks at things like the minority reports and so on, but I do recommend that when you're trying to get through some of the heavier stuff, a cool glass of something like cider is always a, recommend a very solid recommendation. It's, 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 <laughs> this is actually film philosophy. This is the domino effect. I know it's all. It was from my presentation on, on determination. And what can I say? I wanted to make sure people weren't falling asleep. And yes, I got quite a good mark. Um, you can do these things in film. On the left, we have Eisenstein. That's Battleship Potemkin. On the right, you might recognise De Palma's um, The Untouchables. Please bear in mind in film, nothing is ever stolen, it is always a homage. Absolutely everything, there's only, what's it, seven original stories, and in film everything will be redone. And this is the problem. When we study film, we do a lot of sequence analysis. This is from Breaking the Waves, Lars van Trier. I admire him. I hate this film. I don't know how many, probably 50 or 60 times, I actually saw this film to do a, a, an essay on a two-minute sequence. It will drive you to despair. But things like studying film and gender are so much more fun. I did a, an essay on queer theory, and I looked at um, John Waters' uh, film Hairspray uh, with the divine Glenn uh, Milstead. Divine, it's a pun. <laughs> also, a fa John Trollton, if that's who wouldn't recommend it, but never mind. Adaptation is a big part of what we do as well because everything comes from somewhere else. This is his nearest, it's going kind to of get intellectual by the way, I'm going to mention Tolstoy just to say he wrote about the pursuit of money being the root of all evil. The film in this, um, did the same thing, nothing ever changes particularly in film. I love this film. There are some times it's never a pain to re-watch and re-watch the film. This is J.K. Simmons from Whiplash. And this is a joy, because you always spot something, you watch it again and again, you see a look, you see something that will bring you on. But you will watch films that you have to watch, that you don't like. Here we have two weeks, Dirty Dance of a Fight Club, take your pick. Nobody puts a film student in the corner. And by the way, the first rule of Fight Club is, every film student talks about Fight Club. There will always be something that you can watch. This is a challenging film. It's probably a very famous film that you, don't, you know about, but you actually don't know it. This is The Machinist. That's Christian Bale just before he got into his bat suit. He lost, he had to put on 60 pounds. He's 120 pounds in this. But this is a really interesting film, um, which I'm doing an essay on at the moment, if I ever get my head together. This is our home. It's where we live. It's a screening room. I would advise keep your coat on until the heating goes up, taking a coffee and a muffin, especially for the morning screenings. But it is a good place to watch films and watch them as a group. Nothing better than watching a film on a big screen. We get guest speakers. It's fantastic. You learn so much, except if it's Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone refused to answer my question. <laughs> he never, he talks about everything. He answers everything. He did answer eventually. He had a straw. 
it was great. It was a big um, lecture theater in George Square. I, I live tweeted it. It was one of the highlights of my life. And there's conferences. And the great thing about film studies is everybody's equal, everybody's included. It doesn't matter if you're a new graduate student and you know absolutely nothing. Two seats along with a professor whose book I'd actually just quoted in one of my essays. And they're so nice to you. It won't last, but it is nice. Film festivals, you don't have to go to Cannes, you don't have to go to Toronto, you don't have to go to London. Edinburgh is not just an industry festival. Anybody can go. There is some bad stuff. You never re recognize the quality until you see it's a bad film. But it's on your doorstep and Glasgow's 50 minutes away. It's fantastic. I have never seen the end of Apocalypse Now. I know how it ends. This is it. I know how it ends. It's very long. It's always on very late. But thanks to Wikipedia and the internet database, I will always know the endings of the film. It will not get you through a seminar, but it's hell. <laughs> if, you, if I've not convinced you yet the film is worth studying, please bear in mind, it's a business. It's worth a huge amount of money. Lego Batman has made almost $200 million. And the last um, Star Wars film made half a billion. This gives you an idea of the kind of money involved. So what I suggest is sit back, enjoy the film, don't kick the back of my seat. Don't slip your drink. Don't rustle your sweets. And if you don't turn off that phone and put it away, I'll find a place for it. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It'll be at the bottom of my popcorn. <laughs> Thank you.